Hey, this is Trevor from Halifax calling in to say that I support creative control on Patreon because I think long form arts journalism is a crucial part of music culture and there's simply not enough of it out there today. Vish is a master interviewer, he lands great guests, and he has his finger on the pulse of the ever-changing music landscape, both here in Canada and abroad. For all of these reasons and many more, I think you should support Creative Control on Patreon too. To make your flexible monthly donation to Creative Control, please visit patreon.com slash creative control today. I'm Vish's wife, and I will love him no matter what you do. And now he has me on the record saying that. Rob Benvy and Peter Elkis are longtime friends who each live in separate homes with their respective families in Toronto, Ontario. Benvy is a writer, novelist, and founding member of the Halifax band Thrush Hermit, and currently sings most of the songs in the band Bankruptcy, whose excellent new album, Computers Make the Drinks, is available everywhere as of November 7th, 2019. Elkis is a terrific songwriter, musician, and producer who was in the wonderful band Local Rabbits and is almost completely in charge of the Peter Elkis Band, whose latest release, Lion, came out in 2018. Peter is bringing his band out for some Ontario shows in Hamilton, Collingwood, and Sudbury between November 28th and 30th, but before that, he welcomes bankruptcy to his monthly residency show at the Dakota Tavern in Toronto, so that they can have a record release show on November 7th. I recently drove to Toronto to meet with Pete and Rob and discuss their long musical friendship, their old bands, the new bankruptcy album, fake pornos and comic strips, future plans, and more. A part of the E1 Podcast Network with the support of listeners like you who subscribe to this podcast and spread the word about it and make flexible monthly donations at patreon.com slash Control. Plus in-kind support from CFRU 93.3 FM, Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee in Guelph, and Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton. This is the 506th episode of Creative Control, featuring two great pals, Rob Benvy and Peter Elkis, with your host, me, Vish Khanna. Pete, how's it going? Really well. Good to see you. Thanks to, for having us here in your studio, which is called what again? Robin's Nest. Robin's Nest. Yeah. Very nice. It was Elka's studio before, which is probably better. But <laughs> yeah, Robin's Nest is Magnum PI's, um, uh, the, the estate that he lives on, uh, which is owned by Robin Masters in, in the Tom Selleck era uh-huh. of Magnum PI. I hate that I have to differentiate now between like an original era and a current <laughs> Did they era. remake Magnum P.I.? Yeah, it's on now. It's terrible. Oh, that's right. It's I do. I remember that. Right, right, right. Yeah. Why, why did they remake that show? Why would they? I don't know. Like, no good ideas anymore, apparently. It seems to be the case. Higgins, is there a Higgins character? There is, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's a, he's robot. portrayed by a female. Oh. It should be a, yeah, anyway. A funny robot. They're, they've created a love interest, I guess. Clone. Oh, I see. They didn't need to create that. That was already there. What was but. the name of the uh, actor who portrayed uh, Higgins? Jonathan Hillerman. Hillerman, and he's yeah. passed. I he assume. has passed. Sadly, okay. yes. Selleck is around. Selleck is is still with us. Uh, has he made any fun cameos? On no, I think guy? he said he wasn't going to do that. He's too busy stealing water for his avocados. <laughs> yeah, right, think, right, yeah. right. He's not, <laughs> what do you make of that? He's become kind of a nefarious figure. Yeah, he's so. like a like almost like a Western movie bad guy now. Yeah, kind <laughs> like of, in yeah. real life. In real life, yeah, he probably likes that. The irony was that uh, it, they hired the city of Los Angeles hired a private investigator to foil his plot. 
that's for that's for real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also here, Rob Benby. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Good. We, we you were sort of near me when I did this recently with Fresh Hermit. <laughs> I was just saying to Pete, it's funny that you're we're doing this again, even though I guess I wasn't on the last one. Yeah, but you, I was you telling were... him that I, I bowed out of that interview. Now, why we was that? We never it. talked about that since. You just said it, uh, when uh, this was what a month ago. By the way, about a month ago. Have I talked to you? That Thresh Hermit show was amazing. Oh, thank you. Unbelievable. I saw the one in London. I in wish London, I'd, yeah. Wish I'd gone to more, but I. They, couldn't. they got better. It, it, we did 14 or 15 shows yeah and i really felt by the end we were like in the zone yeah well that's what happens when you keep yeah. playing and then we stopped and, and you stopped <laughs> it and so that's all it was but yeah you didn't want to be on that episode so i had joel plaskett <clears throat> ian mcgettigan on yeah you contributed vaguely in the background as i recall or you or cliff shouted out a clarification um, I was trying yeah. to figure out the reunion, the last reunion, and one of you said, "Oh no, it was 2010." But yeah, anyway. there was no, there was no real reason <laughs> that I didn't want to do that interview. Because he knew you would be in the spinoff, which is this one. This yeah, one, this is yeah. the the yeah. better spinoff. This is the uh, Jeffersons to the <laughs> all the family. Of <laughs> well, it's great. This is nice. Uh, I have a long relationship with you guys. You two have a long relationship. I thought we'd talk about that a little bit. You have mm-hmm. a show coming up on November 7th together. Yes. So friendship forever is the theme here on some level. Yes. So I want to begin... Um, despite everything. Despite everything. Despite everything he's put me through, we're still friends. Well, there's been geographical separation. There's been all sorts of things. And now you're you're in the same city. You have been for yeah. some time, Toronto. Yeah, we haven't had much geographical separation for a really long time. We've more often had too much ge- geographical proximity. <laughs> yeah. Is that we, right? We lived together at one point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I want to delve into this relationship, this dynamic between you two. Again, I, I know this is going to be funny. No, this will be interesting. I'm interested here. I almost want to leave the room and, and <laughs> well, these listen, are, listen to the podcast myself. These are the kinds of conversations <laughs> that two uh, friends who've known each other a long time wouldn't really have at this point in their relationship, probably. Yeah. Uh, you know, reflecting on, yeah. on your lives together. But I will say, uh, as you both know, in my youth, in my teenage years, I would come see both of your bands. Pete, you were in Local Rabbits. I loved, I saw almost more than anyone mm-hmm. until I started watching the Sadies. Because there was no one else at the show. No? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's not fair. No, you would come, you would play a lot. And you were one of the best live bands I'd ever seen. Right and uh, you, you know this shit. I mean, I've, I've talked to you about this. You know this. And uh, Rob... Thresh Hermit didn't play. I didn't get to see Thresh Hermit as much because you were from Halifax and you would come by. And we put you on the anti guest list. That's right. The anti guest list was rough. That was a rough time for me. No, but I would see Thresh Hermit all the time. And as a result, I also know that you two would play those shows together a lot, those two bands. Yeah. So let's start from there, maybe. How did Mm -hmm. you two meet, to your recollection? Uh, let's start with Pete, actually. I'm mm. just curious. Pete, do you remember how you first encountered I'm Rob? stroking my goatee, mm-hmm. which just as an aside, I want you to know It's a that. beard, by the way. Well, no, my face has played a practical joke on me that it's turned all the side of my face gray, so from not very far away, it looks like my beard is a goatee. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Great. No matter how hard I try. Which is a very 90s thing. We're talking about a bit about the 90s. Yeah. Uh-huh. Goatees are very 90s. Yeah, so you, I wouldn't yeah. have been No one in either of our bands in any state in a goatee. Though, yeah. Brian Waters had a goatee at one point, your, your former he, drummer. It, a go, did it? You, no. Oh, absolutely. I would noticed it. I was like, oh my God. Okay. Goatee. Or maybe but it was a mustache. Did he you, had all kinds of stuff. Yeah, maybe he was just, he was experimenting he with He was uh, mature for his age physically, so. <laughs> Mentally um, as well, as yes. I recall. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, do you remember how you met I Rob? I do. Uh, I'm going to say it was 90, 1992, and Sloan were playing at Concordia University campus, downtown, outdoor show. And we went down there as we would. Our friend Tim McAuliffe, who was the band's manager, I use that term loosely, uh, air quotes, and uh, he was just a friend who couldn't play guitar, basically. And, and But Tim had always had the ambition of like getting the rabbits further, and we had a dem- new demo tape, a track that we recorded in my parents' basement, and uh, we wanted to give it to Sloan. And so we went down there and just went, somehow went into the backstage. We would always do things like that. And then we saw Thrush Hermit standing in front of us, those four guys across from us, we four, like looking into a bizarro um, portal. And there was like, each guy had a counterpart. Uh-huh. And uh, mine was Rob, I think. <laughs> and, Is that right? Uh, I think so. Okay. Sure. And then, but it was, you know, in sincerity, it was kind of amazing because Sloan were older. Yeah. But I was kind of more captured by the Thrush Hermit opening set. 
And I think you guys played um, One Night Love Affair by Brian Adams. It's funny that like funny covers were kind of more Yeah, memorable. that's the thing that people did back then. We did yeah. a lot of wacky covers. I'm not really sure. That was a thing that I don't know, people did. Infamously, Everybody... there was the Steve Miller Band set at yeah. uh, Edge Fest 95. Yeah. Yeah. Local Rabbits played that as well on the mm. did you play the side stage? Yes. Local right. Rabbits Local Rabbits were veering, but oh the that Edge Fest show though, Local Rabbits were on stage for every single act that played that yes. day. Like, yeah. Dancing. Yeah. Uh, I distinctly yeah. remember just the, improving uh, things. Choreo- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember the choreographed dancing during the Buck sixty five Stink and Rich set. Oh yeah. Punching great. and then also during great. the Sloan set. I don't were they on stage during your Hermit set? Yes, there's video and documentation. Okay, of that. I, didn't, uh, I don't remember. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. that's probably in that box set that the uh, Threshold box set. I feel that whole that whole set is on a is on DVD. I think. I, yeah, I haven't even dug into it. No yet one, myself. no one, even the people who edit it have watched all <laughs> that. <laughs> so, does that ring true to you, Rob? Yeah, we point? we so our band Threshold we were very young as, as they were. They so we got going right out of high school. So we first toured. Yeah, so I would have been 18 years old. Yeah. And we toured all around the same age as you, Peter. You Yeah, Rob's a year yeah. one calendar year yeah. older than me. Oh, that older than you. Yeah. Second time on tour. We first tour we did a tour with Hardship Post. You know, right. And then our second tour was with Sloan. We toured we did a lot of touring with Sloan and that mm-hmm. was the three were, they were sort of our mentors, older brother type thing. Right. And uh but I do remember that show very well. We played outdoors. Yeah, it's just as Pete said, outdoors in Montreal. Montreal, yeah. And uh, I remember, yeah, I, I remember. I remember meeting those dudes quite well. Um, and they were very... We did uh, meet well. It was a good meeting. It was a... They met us well. <laughs> and uh, they were a little uh, overwhelming in some regards. But then I remember after... The rabbits the sh- in particular? Uh, Pete and Ben, I mean... They're pretty hyper, right? They were They're pretty... hyper dudes. They were in your face, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Let's just pretend Pete's not here. Okay. Very hyper, like a lot of energy yeah. and People excitement. People who know Pete now as is, is sort of suave, debonair yes. man yes. might be surprised to have seen him in his, in those days. A lot of, uh, not even inside comedy. I was going to say inside jokes. There were lots of inside jokes, but a lot of comedy. A lot of comedy, a lot of physical comedy. A lot, a lot of, of physical. A lot and, of wrestling to the ground but and like, tearing off your clothes. To open the liner notes for a local Rabbits record, you're laughing. Mm-hmm. All, even the thank yous. You're laughing at the thank yous because they're just so silly. Mm. And to see the band play... Which, I, you know, as we get older, I think, in our band, we were pretty goofy, too. That's but, right. Which, you know, we uh, tend to kind of <laughs> react against that as you get a little older because you don't want to be known as, like, a comedy troupe. A but, novelty group but of the, the But I think one of the things that we I liked... I wanted you guys to be known as a comedy yeah, troupe. Yeah, you didn't want... Um, no, one this of the things is not to... Do, you guys were very funny, too, but the Rabbits just... Pretty seemed, funny. I mean, I still have... I mean, okay, who's funnier? <laughs> um, the local rabbits had a shirt that had uh, it was a softball T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. and it, on the back of it, it said R. McNeil, Rita McNeil. Yeah, and I believe the number Next zero. Level. I, yeah, I yeah. still There's have no this shirt in yeah. fairly good condition. Of course, yeah. at the time, for some reason, now that would have been too mean spirited for Thrush Hermit. Yeah, see, we would I totally know sacrifice if... potential merch uh, revenue. Yeah. for we were a little, we were a little, sense. we were even from the early days a little professionally minded. Yeah. in that we would never would have gone that far out yeah. on, a, on a joke but the rabbits i think yeah to uh, i thought unabashed. 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 unabashed but i think also Just a cyclone re- of good decisions mm-hmm. yeah. no but i was gonna say i think you recognize that m- mm-hmm. music took itself very seriously back then oh and you God, guys yeah. weren't gonna do like you were among the greatest musicians i'd ever seen like that's what resonated with me just the guitar mm-hmm. playing the bass playing the drumming the singing that's how bands work generally mm-hmm. All this stuff was just like high level. Let's need to more me. instruments. Thank you. Um. And, and and so you had this like <laughs> totally like and and you know now in retrospect I'm like those guys look they were probably guitar nerds they probably practiced twelve hours a day but to get that good but so but they were the idea of being a seriously. guitar nerd would have been like absolutely unacceptable yes exactly and, and laughable um, and that's one thing we bonded well yeah. among many things but that was probably the thing that we bonded with immediately with those guys is. Than not taking yourself too seriously. We probably, they probably, they they probably thought we took ourselves too seriously, and we were the least serious band of anyone we knew. So, hmm. but that's what think about those times in the '90s where you had like, especially in Canada, there was all these awful, quote unquote, alternative rock bands that were just like disgusting, yeah. dominating the sort of the bandwidth, and 
you know, we we liked our band. <laughs> Thrush, we, you know, we were buddies with Sloan. Sloan were also a really funny band. I mean, yeah. pe- and people now maybe think of them as like, you know, I don't know whatever think of them, but like they were a really funny. Well, Chris I mean, is the funniest guy. Chris and, is the funniest guy. And uh, I mean, he's not the funniest guy, but he thinks. Well, know, we shouldn't let a, him hear. He will this. approve what's the funniest. He'll, 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 he'll yes, he will like to be. You, to I mean, there guy. was this. Uh, this was a something of a golden age where of much music for mm-hmm. me, which was really open to you guys being yes. on, and they gave Chris. Chris, I used to joke was like the David Letterman of daytime. Much he's like he was yeah, he so was funny, and they did so many funny. I mean, things he'll with him. that guy. He'll attend the opening of an envelope. He'll do anything. But, yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's a bit shameless. <laughs> but he's very funny. But and, he's a very funny guy. And, and I feel like when you're when and he ran mm-hmm. the label, you were on for yeah. a great deal of time. So when you have humor at the leadership level, I think mm-hmm. it reflects well on the bands to like, oh, okay, we yeah. can have fun here. Like it's yeah. not. Yeah. yeah, and it was thing. a time, yeah, when everybody was very self serious in in a kind of meaningless way. Like yeah. not like like bands would be very serious and, and but not in like a politically interesting way or you know, like I liked serious music growing up, probably to a you know, to a fault, but like uh that you would see other bands bands that we admired like, you know, like Pavement or Shellac or these bands that were yeah. funny in a sort of like hard to figure out way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um but they weren't laughable, they weren't calm, they weren't fucking bare naked ladies or something you know like they weren't like corking the juice pigs it wasn't like no no it wasn't a novelty thing it was a novelty and so first of all we were kind of like our songs were always serious ish but you know it was like okay you guys we got a video fact grant you have you know eight thousand dollars to make a video obviously we're gonna like okay well we're gonna spend it all on like getting a horse you know like right, we're not gonna right. yeah <laughs> and the local rabbits had that same kind of vibe where it was it was it, you know like partly youth partly just like what can we get away with what, yeah. and and how can we these self-serious assholes who are dominating the scene how can we <laughs> kind of dig at them a bit well when, I, when when and where possible i wasn't thinking we would dig deep this deep down into this idea but i do think that you guys were in a realm in a in the independent music sphere in this country and in north america there where you weren't really being taken seriously by the mainstream at all on some level right like they had to st- because mm-hmm. of the various booms that occurred with underground culture, they had to start taking you a little bit more seriously and give you airtime on the nation's music station and I whatnot. Will, but I will use this as a prompt for Pete to fill in, but I, I was thinking about this, about the difference or differences and similarities between Thrush Army and Local Rabbits, in yeah. that we came from a very nurturing, almost too nurturing music scene out in Halifax. We felt very isolated and had a real scene of friends, and, yeah. and we were sort of a little, like half a generation younger than most of the bands that we played with, so... The bands we were friends with, like um, you know, like Sloan and Eric's Trip or Hardship Post or the Super Friends, like those bands we were yeah. pals with. It was it was very like uh, you know we had a scene that was very nurturing, almost to a point where we had to get away from it. Whereas local rabbits were coming from the Montreal music scene, yeah, which was abysmal at the time, yeah, just and terrible. didn't include us. We were very much on the margins of that. We lived in the Anglo suburbs of Montreal called the West Island, yeah. and um, so we were not really there was no real music scene to to find in the in the suburbs and we were not accepted into the one that existed downtown like we would go and play with all kinds of bands um who knew of us and we would wind up on the cover of a weekly or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. but it was yeah. always who are these guys and then so i think being introduced to thrush hermit and seeing that and and, and murder records that was something we wanted to be a part of specifically so when that happened it was like we were elated. I mean, I was. Weren't you know. the Rabbits like the first non Nova Scotian band? I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Right, probably Something like Eric's that. Trip. Yeah. Oh, oh right, sorry, right. non uh, non Maritimes yeah. band. Is that the, the Trip, fair yeah, term? Yeah, Eric Trip were on there too. Yeah. Fucking bad. Well, yeah. my my whatever is going though is that if you're not being taken, what what I noticed now, you mentioned pavement and shellac as well, mm-hmm. and you guys, I think, fall into the same realm. You're not taken seriously by the powers that be. Partially because you're making fun of them constantly. Are we talking about this uh, back then? You mean back then? Yeah. Like, I, I like when I think about mm-hmm. what you were making fun of, and in, in a lot of ways, it was like the infrastructure. Yeah. It was the music business on some level. Yeah, yeah. Like just all the kind of typical things everyone used to have to do or mm-hmm. do. Oh you would God. kind of make fun of it. I That's... wonder if on some level with us that it was sort of self sabotage in a way, so we wouldn't have to cross weird bridges if we ever got to them like is that right maybe like signing yeah. a weird record deal which we never really had to do like hmm. w- with the rabbits our only record deal to speak of was was with murder records and that was more or less like a fun welcoming into a clique handshake deal with a major distribution we didn't have to kind of jump through any hoops or any of that 
And I don't think we would have been asked to because we were making stupid looking merch right. and making idiots of ourselves on, on much music. But you would tour so much that I would think someone yeah. might have smelled some money in that, you know, like an agent or... I, I don't know. Well, we did. We had an agent. We had like the little pieces of the puzzle that you need to be yeah, active right. as a band. And right. we would, we like ran the gauntlet of stuff you had to do to have music out there at the time yeah. and have uh, CDs and be on a label and like... So all kinds of stuff we probably took for granted that now bands really try to covet, you know? Yeah, but, right, um, right, right. Yeah. So it's a different time, obviously. Yeah, I don't think we consciously tried to. We weren't like railing against like <laughs> the 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 man or anything. We just it was a normal teenager sort of like fu to to stuff. Well, um, I was thinking about both your bands uh, this week as well, and it's interesting to me that you, Pete, said I found my counterpart in Rob. Mm -hmm. because I kind of think that hear me out here and this is a, just a wild theory <laughs> because you're also very good friends Pete with Joel Plaskett yeah and all the guys uh, all the guys in Thresherman yeah. and do you like do you, are there any local rabbits you dislike actively Rob uh let's see let's run through um no <laughs> yeah, you not. like them I love them all I was thinking about it in this frame uh I feel like Ben Gunning who mm -hmm. is your primary songwriting partner I suppose yeah. in local rabbits the main songwriter of the band too yeah. You consider yourself secondary? Yes. Really? Yeah. I never viewed it that way. I mean, the math is there as well. Oh, in like, terms of like... There's more tunes and okay. more uh, more input, more deference to Ben, like legitimately, like he was Ben. Like he taught me to play and yeah. And so similarly, Rob, I mean, is that, that's kind of a similar mathematical equation with you and Joel Plaskett. Yeah. Yeah. It's mathematically, yeah. Mathematically yeah. It got to that point anyway. You would write many songs but not as well I mean on the last I think there was I don't know I mean I guess everyone I don't know but when you everyone started, would see different I think I felt there was more of a s stark difference between Joel and me than there would be to Pete well actually no, that's okay not so true. here's that's not, my, no, I take that back that's here's my true. theory about this that I was thinking about I take that back I feel like Ben Gunning and Rob Benby uh -huh. a little less populist in their approach to songwriting a little more angry uh, if I, I don't think angry is the right word, but a little more biting in their in sure. their ob ob lyrical observation. Joel, you and Pete, I think a little more like I like Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. I like music that's kind of heartfelt. I like earnestness. Yeah. And so I always, I always find that in, I found that interesting that you both had these kind of. Do you first of all, Rob, have I have I cast your songwriting in a negative or strange light to you? Does that ring true? Do you think? I'll roll Other than the with, fact I'll that it sounds that. negative and strange, your music. <laughs> <laughs> There's an acerbic quality. Like if I'm gonna, if I if I know a Joel song is coming up, I kind of know where it's gonna go. Uh -huh. It's fairly, I don't know, transparent. The sentiment. Whereas I feel like I'll Rob, make sure he listens to this. Well, <laughs> does he disagree? Would he disagree? Is that a, is that a dig? Is that I'm a dig? Calling or? someone songwriting transparent? Well, no. I just mean like I get it. I get where it's coming from on some level. Okay. Whereas if I listen to one of your songs, Rob, I'm gonna reach for the lyric sheet myself that's just my impulse to be like wait what's going on like this hmm. doesn't sound like a normal hmm. pop song some the language the hmm. idea here is a bit darker it's a right. little coming from a different place i thought the same about ben yeah like ben's songs were funny and and but i always thought they had this angst to them more uh -huh. so than yours i mean it was there of course yeah so all i'm saying is you have these interesting <laughs> bands where i feel like you have one kind of popular songwriter primary songwriter and then the songwriting partner is a little less so, like a little less eager to please. Don't let him hear this. He's going to be really upset. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I'm I think totally, so, yeah. yeah totally in broad strokes, it. I mean. Broad yeah, strokes. Yeah. I'm, it's case-by-case yeah. case basis. So mm -hmm. I find that dynamic interesting between your bands as well. Yeah, well, that's one of the reasons why anyone who's been in a band or, you know, the kind of, when you strike up bands, strike up friendships and kinships on on the road or whatever situation um you know, strange linkages can appear. You know, we would tour with the rabbits and we'd run into them all the time and meet up and it was always kind of funny like who who's who's dating now, you know? And and so a lot of time, yeah, the Who's know, the, dating now? Is well that... like Pete and Joel would sit in the car and listen to Respoon Records like <laughs> oh, alone. Oh I see while the rest of us like drank beer or something, you know. No, or, made like a uh, fake porno in the Yeah, or, or making fake pornos or whatever. <laughs> you guys doing. made a fake porno? I should not allow to talk about it. What? I directed yeah. it. That's all I'll you say. Directed I was behind the camera. What is a say. fake porno, by the way? Aren't most pornos by their very nature <laughs> a lot of fakery going on? Uh it's softcore. So softcore porno. Yeah. I, I, I want to hear more about this at some point, but off uh, the record, <laughs> it sounds like it might be um, off the but, record. But there was that kinship, and you know, like when you're young and you're 
figuring out what you're doing and stuff and and very passionate about your band and your songwriting your role in it and full of like anxiety because you know in your band you have your little gang where you know it's us against the world but also within your gang you never know where you stand and stuff and and that yeah. would be one of the things that our band and 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 Pete's band yeah and yeah. I'm sure anyone can this is very relatable you know you meet up with another band and all you want to do is talk about like Oh, I hate this guy. You know, where I'm fighting, really I'm funny. fighting with yeah. the other guy. We're arguing. This is what the calamity we're facing yeah. right now. And yeah. so those those things were fuel for friendship in many ways. You know, and not just with with Pete and Ben, also with with Ryan and and Brian and yeah, Jay yeah. who are in, in Rabbits. We'd always talk about. You know, there'd always be some situation where like one guy and another guy, we're gonna go take a walk and talk about what's going on and stuff. And um, not that it's uncommon so, for any two yeah, vans that are traveling somewhere exactly. to break and off and just be like, oh, you won't believe course. what's going on in this van exactly. right now. You yeah. can't wait to talk to run yeah. to other bands so you can complain about your bandmates and stuff. And But it all comes from love. And so That's, I would agree with your assessment you in that regard. You would agree in the, with that regard. Pete, what do you make of the theory I came up about the two bands? <laughs> I don't know. What, what do you uh, make of it? Does it seem As accurate? far as like this, the songwriter aspect of it? Yeah, just the way things worked out. I, and by the way, this is also informed by what you have all done since you've left those bands. Yeah. I feel like, again, um, you followed your heart, which wasn't to make yeah. music that was particularly, it was supercharged rock and roll music, but it had, it sort of fits within a, re- relatively fits within a, songwriting tradition I suppose whereas I think Rob you've done all sorts of things uh, and even this mm-hmm. band that you're in now Bankruptcy which by the way new record Computers Make the Drinks am I yeah. saying that correct beautiful fucking amazing album thanks I love it and again it's got that biting quality that I, I relate mm. to right I w- I, oh, yeah. go, no no go ahead what were you going to say I like um, the negative and strange for single. That's all I've been able to <laughs> yeah. listen But did I say it was negative and strange? Is <laughs> strange that the word I used? I don't know. I might have said strange. strange. I don't strange. know if I did. I didn't mean to say. Yeah. I, didn't I have mean no it. idea at this point whether <laughs> I'm a, I should say that's what I'm trying to do <laughs> or that's the only what I'm capable of doing <laughs> no. is writing songs that are not catchy. They are catchy. Hard though. to get into. All of that's what I'm all about. Notes. It's songs that's hard, that are hard to get into. Like if I think about a song like Patriot by Thresh Hermit, like <clears throat> under yeah. the, the pop framework, there's some dark stuff always going on there. You know what we just, because we just did this tour yeah. and we'd end with that song yeah. kind of every night. We did pretty much the same set. And every night I'd be like, this is a really weird song to end on because it's all about feeling isolated from other all my songs in Thresh were about how isolated and yes. alone I felt <laughs> and but we're trying to cast this big tent about like, it's party time learn to party neon rock and roll sign now like we're ending on this song that's all about like I feel like the song is about that feeling of um, you know I, 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 I'm out performing for people I'm creating these connections and in, internally I feel I don't know who I am I'm totally Absolutely. adrift yeah. which is pretty much all my songs are about and uh, it's a funny song to end like this triumphant rock and roll show on this but it's a downer, pop song but, like, that's but it's the, a pop song that's yeah. the genius of what all rhythm. of you have done is you would write these somewhat dark personal songs a lot of them had like an observational socio-cultural yeah. aspect to them too but yeah so uh, I we we lost Pete in that answer. I was trying to ask Pete if you agreed with my assertion generally. I would say generally yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh yeah, that songwriting wise. I was I I, I was misleading because I was kidding that each guy had a counterpart. Like I mean oh, it was yeah. more or less like <laughs> there's were. four guys who are our age roughly <clears throat> out doing what we want to do and I'm talking about meeting Thrusher at opening for Sloan. No, yeah. Pete and I look exactly alike. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, like, like well, I, the I, bizarro version. I yeah. did say earlier, like you have a very strong bond and history with Joel Plasky yeah. too. Like you and Joel were in the cover of Exclaim magazine together. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, and you've done lots of collaborations. So, like, there is. I'm not saying it's just you and Rob Envy till you die. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's you. You're a, you're obviously there's a social circle here. Oh, I mean, and I I mean it when I say that. Like it was, uh, it was revelatory meeting these guys and realizing that there were more people like me out there mm-hmm. uh, and I wanted to be friends with all these dudes because um, Ian and I were really close too for a long time. I don't see him as much now. Yeah. Um, he takes off to Romania for a lot of the year and stuff, but um, here's Jeff. Oh, we have a, we have a guest. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. This is how's Jeff Luciani, drummer for Bankruptcy. Hey, how's it going? Good. We're just Box. having a chat. Hey, hey Jeff. Did you bring us oh, records? No, it's fine. Yes, yes. It's Sight. fine. This um, bankruptcy record, we were just talking about how great it is. Let's check it out. Let's well, see it. Talking, gonna, this is like an un- we, we have to do an unboxing video now. 
So we have the new oh, bank rip. Bye, man. Did you already take some? I did. I just took two, so I don't know. Look at that. The raptor. Here's one for you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> cool. Computers make the drinks. It looks lovely. What do you do on the record there, Jeff? Uh, I play drums. You're a great drummer. Oh, thank you. I play drums. Oh, great. And I think you're great. <laughs> it's great. I like <laughs> the beats. They're cool. This is great. Thank you. That's really exciting. Way to yeah. go, guys. Exciting. Is this the first time you're seeing this? Yeah, rap? I haven't seen them since they, they came back. This is exciting. Oh, they're even wrapped. Bro. <laughs> Did you think they weren't going to be shrink wrapped? I wasn't positive if they're going to shrink wrapped. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have to put stuff in yourself, the liners and whatnot, or yeah, whatever no, else you want. Download codes. So I'm also. Hey Pete. Hi Jeff. How's it going, buddy? Oh, it's good yourself. Good. I'll, like wrap up and records. I didn't know like if you want to take okay. all of them. This is fun. To this is totally like cool. fun. Yeah. Um, like what do you make of this bankruptcy band? band? I don't know. I think it's great. Uh, see, there's another guy. I mean, Jeff's become my friend too, but but Wayne McPherson, who is the other kind of uh, singer and writer, is also my really good friend, and I know him through the Thrush Hermit connection too, because Wayne is from Halifax too. Oh, is he? So, like, in meeting these guys in Sloan and everything, I was opened up completely to another community that I, I'm still in, really. You know, like, and it's been. 25 years I guess so that that's kind of like I think when you were on the cover with Joel of Exclaim that I was alluding to before like that became a real focal point like this what well, was like a brotherhood thing it was like that it, was framed, always, it was framed yeah. that way did it, did it feel, does it really feel that way to you yes yeah absolutely um, it really does that's how I felt about my band too I, and I always felt that I really be, I, I mean this that the social aspect took precedence over the music and I think it's funny when you talk about like how the sort of comedy aspects of the bands uh, is a, a little bit at odds with what was going on musically in terms of like sincerity versus kind of uh, irreverence. Yeah. Um, it makes total sense to me because the bands were way more collaborative in their comedy and they're like everything <laughs> that was like on, uh, you know, um, on the periphery of being in the band then than the music. The music was always like one guy's song. It was this terrible model that Sloan established of like every guy has to do stump, has to be the singer and all that. Um, I think it was the Beatles. It was the, yeah, Beatles. the Beatles who did that. The yeah. Well, it's still the terrible model that the Beatles, <laughs> yeah. uh, where like, you know, everybody can just have a job. It's okay, you know, just do that one thing. But, right, right. Um, so the songs were the, like to, to my recollection, I think it's still probably true of today. Like uh, this, the, the stuff was played close to the chest, the lyrics, the music, you know, I know Ben was very guarded about, he didn't want to change much about the tunes. And I just kind of followed that too. I was pretty, probably more open, but I feigned like a real self-importance about, about the tunes, but like, it was more about getting together and joking around with guitars on or joking around in a van, going and having a slumber party somewhere out of town, getting blind drunk, yeah, making it out across the country and making it back and then doing that again as soon as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. That was way more important to me than, than music. I knew what I liked and I took it really seriously. And I think that you hear that, and I wanted to be a part of bands that that took it seriously, and I wanted to have those moments on stage and play loudly and like be uh, be strong in what we were doing. And I mm. think that I think that was super true of the, of the Hermit. And it's funny because I went to the Toronto show and I opened the Ottawa show with Peter Elkis Band on the Thrush Hermit tour, and I was so pumped at how loud it was <laughs> because like every all the bands tend we all tend to get kind of quieter i think there was some embracing of like small amps and stuff like you know, 10 years ago <laughs> yeah but it was super loud in ottawa it was at uh what w used to be called zafods in the market club now 27 it's called 27 club and or 27 club sorry yeah. um kind of grim and it was uh <laughs> transportative in that way where i was like oh here i am again opening for the hermit and uh I didn't realize that I missed this, but I guess that I, I guess I do. And like the volume of being in the crowd and, and the amps were super loud and uh, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. And you guys were like that same kind of, uh, that same strength was there and Toronto show was similar. And yeah. You were yeah. saying it got better as you went along. On the tour? The Thresher I think tour. we got better as, yeah, by the, I mean, bands do. We didn't rehearse a whole lot, which we didn't, we didn't yeah. really need to, but I felt we kind of were really in the, in the zone by the end, which is, Unfortunate because then it ended, but it yeah, had, it was a nice run. I mean, it was. But I feel like uh, you have a. I don't want to say it's a. What is your view of these kinds of things recurring, coming back? Like, uh, you, very you, mixed feelings. I mean, yeah. I was talking about this with Pete is funny because Pete was the the guy that I bitched about it for months leading up to this. This Thrush tour was like almost a year in the 
discussion. Plaska was saying that when we talked, like it's really hard to get everyone on board to do this kind of thing, right? Yeah, I mean, you, not the guys in the band in terms of on board philosophically, but just putting the whole act the tour together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's booking what, shows. That's and, what I took. Yeah, it the as. logistics yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I took. Um, we were all into it. I mean, I I was the holdout, which is funny because the last time we did a run, I was the one who instigated it. But why were you holding out? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't really have a great answer for that. I mean, on one hand, I'm kind of tying into what we're talking about here like th when you grow up and when you have a band that you started when you're 16 and you break up when you're 25 you know it's like it's more than a band in your own personal narrative you know it's like a coming of age experience so formative yeah very formative and so I'm, I'm trying to put this in terms that anyone can relate to that even if you don't give a shit about the bands we're talking about now like so the things you know i know lots of people i guess want to go to like, their high school reunion and see everyone right. i the idea makes me want to vomit but mm -hmm. so th you never want to feel that you're taking steps backwards you want to forge ahead i mean we're here talking about my band bankruptcy and i'm certainly just as proud of the music i do with bankruptcy than i ever did with thresher in some ways i'm more because it's ongoing now and it feels it's, it's different it's new it's fresh it's and a lot of it is polished. it's more you it's more me that's true for better yeah. or for worse yeah um but um, so I but so there was mixed feelings in terms of like just philosophically is this something I want to do logistically is this something I want to do like you know just take off from my family for a few weeks and, yeah yeah and also you know is this something I stand behind like you know when my pals like because like you asked me about it is it something that I can stand behind is something that's cool to do because you know this stage in my life I only want to do musical things that I feel excited about and enthusiastic about and I'm like do I feel excited about this but then I I realized I was just overthinking it and I'm just. Nobody was, was going into a thing like the Threshold Reunion thinking it's anything it wasn't. You know, people were going, I said this to Murphy, I was like, people are there clapping for themselves 20 years ago as much as they're clapping for I us now. I said this to Joel true. and Ian when we yeah. were in the room. And we know that. And we It's know, a moment yeah. for everyone. Uh, it's a transportive moment for yeah. everyone. You're taken back to, I don't view yeah. it that way myself. Yeah, and we're not pretending that it's... What's it's, that? You know, go on. Wait, let Rob. Okay. Oh well, just I mean, I'm not saying anything too original in that regard, but like it's 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 unabashedly nostalgic thing. We opened up with Huey Lewis back in time yeah, yeah, yeah. as a as a nod to don't prepare yourself, don't take this too seriously. We're gonna have fun. Um, we're gonna rock out. The four of us are still friends. We still get along yeah, yeah. well. Um, and got along great, and it was fun, and and it was nothing other than what you saw. There was no there's no impetus to like pretend it were still a vital functioning thing and and people understood that and again it's all pretty small like it's not like we're yeah, yeah, yeah. the Rolling Stones or something it's it's a small group so the people who do care about things like Thrush and or Local Rabbits care passionately and those who don't know us will be blissfully ignorant you know there's another show going on somewhere right now that they're at so um, well, it's I, a, I just I sort of loosened up and I was like let's just go do this make as good as we can enjoy ourselves and, and that's pretty much the end of the story it's a weird thing like the three of us are all dads different children uh, but we're all we're all dads. You should have a show of my three my dads. Three, my three dads, yeah. yeah. So we're all dads, which I don't know if you've had this experience, but hanging out with your kids, you end up reliving your youth a little bit just because you're playing with them. Like you're doing Very all the so. stuff you haven't yeah. done in a long time. All this to say, like, I didn't go to the Thresh Hermit show for some sense memory reason. <laughs> I didn't want to go relive my youth. Right. I'm an adult man now, and I loved your band, so I wanted to go <laughs> see it. I made, I made a big... I had to do a lot of logistic stuff just to attend that show because my wife was out of town and my kids were there and all this stuff. And mm -hmm. I made that effort because that band was significant to me. It is significant to me, I guess is my point. Like it mm -hmm. feels current to me. Like you're the last record you made, all your records you made, maybe not Smart Bomb, but they're all pretty timeless. And uh, <laughs> Smart Bomb's my favorite one. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, me too. Because it's it's all about when and how it was made. Like Interesting. It's, it's so It's nostalgic about high school made before we finished high school <laughs> <laughs> no it's i was amazing. i'm kidding i love it i just all i meant is like i didn't go for that reason but i know a lot of people do and i mean mm -hmm. i don't know i went to that show by myself too like no i can't think of anyone who would come with me no no, no offense there's I a just, lot like, of babysitters getting yeah exactly i was like who yeah, am i gonna yeah. ask to come with me that would really want to go on it was a weeknight in <laughs> london ontario i live in guelph i just went because yeah. i wanted to experience it and i did yeah. and it didn't feel nostalgic it for me i yeah. don't think i'd have to talk to an you analyst mean, i i can understand like your motivation not being nostalgic and just going to see a show and expecting the music to be good which it was but you didn't feel transported like it didn't you, you didn't feel nostalgic when you were there no, I, I don't mean, think anyone would look at us now and pr imagine we. Oh, those guys are eighteen years old. <laughs> like, no, it's I, pretty I, I, uh, I obviously the, the the time has. Yeah, like I just feel it felt 
it didn't feel like this is going to be okay. I don't know nostalgia is a weird thing like sometimes you're not even aware you're being nostalgic about yeah. something mm-hmm. so the act of going to the show wasn't to relive some past glory for me it was to see a band I really right. love that well, doesn't good. do it anymore yeah, that's right? good well, I think a balance of the two things is, is the best way but, to look but, at it yeah. but your experience was kind of the opposite you had this like I'm opening for Thresh Hermit again moment well I, yeah I had I went with my current outfit, uh, yeah, you're, which you're is just band. jeans and t-shirt, but um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you didn't Me go too. with the local rabbits. You went with your new yeah, band. Yeah, I went with the yeah. new band to open. Yeah. If uh, it was local rabbits, it would have been a Randy River khakis, <laughs> tuck, super tucked in with the, uh, <laughs> very, very, very much tucked. Yeah, Fresh hermit. Like I mean, embroidered, uh, Joel belt. and Ian wore vintage outfits. Well, and vintage... Ian also doesn't own any other clothes, so <laughs> yeah, that's he had the same. exact same yeah. stuff he he was wearing the last time I saw them play. Yeah, he wears this that outfit every day. No weight gain, no nothing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead, Pete. But so I went to Ottawa to open the show, and so I was doing something contemporary, even though most of the songs I play, even with my own band, are 15 years old already. But um, it's a different kind of nostalgia for you. Yeah. 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 Um, but <laughs> I was going there to kind of like accomplish like a contemporary goal, I guess. And then, and so it only hit me when my set was over, and I went back to the hallway, which is the same kind of long hallway where you would do that sort of changeover. And the four guys were waiting to go on stage, and it sort of hit me that I was like, "Oh, I'm back in this place <laughs> with the same feeling." And here they all are, but everybody's visibly older. Um, and then, I, then I was transported in a way that I didn't expect to be. And then, even more so, when Ben and I went together to uh, to join in with the guys at their last song um, before you at, leave, b- before you leave in Toronto, yeah, in Toronto at the Toronto show at Danforth Music Hall, I I was transported in a way that like I almost kind of resented. Because I don't actively long for those times that I think of very fondly. Like if I look back to the times we've been sitting here talking about, like meeting Thrush Hermit or joining mur- joining up with Murder Records and becoming part of something where anytime you were in the room with like Sloan, like a Sloan after party where Super Friends are there, Thrush Hermit is there, Catherine Stockhausen is, is there, like people who are all kind of like... <laughs> doing <laughs> I mentioned her because her photos were like so that's true yeah, uh, yeah, such yeah, a big part of yeah, yeah. the imagery and everything and shout out just I, and by that I also mentioned her because she's she's not a, a musician um, she's been on the show there you actually, go like I, I view her she was in a band she was yeah. in a band but her contribute and her contribution to what yes. you're talking about anyway, is yeah. significant I, I just mentioned her as somebody who at the time we had the shared the same feeling of promise and anticipation with of life yeah mm-hmm. so and that was really like, especially if we were all in the same room together, like that was palpable, you know, like yeah. that. It, you didn't, it, it's not something, again, it's not something you articulated at the time. It was just like, we were excited about life and anything was possible, sky's right. the limit. And that's really what it was like. So that's the feeling. That's yeah. the feeling. And it's so feeling I don't, of, but oh. I don't miss that. I, right. I have, I am totally happy with the way my life has, is turning out and, and, uh, I've made great, like I've I had fun making music and fun, all kinds yeah. of fun, different ways. Yeah. And then, but so sitting there watching it and feeling transported back to a time like that, I was like, fuck you guys. Like, I, I, I <laughs> you know, I kind of didn't realize I missed this time. Right. Uh, oh, I uh, see what you're saying. You yeah. know, so uh, like kind of you're sort of making me feel bad. But <laughs> close, close to a high school reunion then in a sense, Rob. In I some mean, ways. Yeah. yeah. Except to... everyone is feeling grounded and successful in their own right. Like they're doing something with their, they feel like. They don't feel you didn't feel bad about it. You felt no, good. I, I, no, I didn't. I felt yeah. a little bit bad. I felt really oh, pumped to be there. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I like I like wrestling with like bitter sweetness and stuff. So sure. it's fine. I welcomed yeah. the bad feeling. But uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I did. I was kind of like, this is weird. And maybe it's not that healthy for everybody in the audience. And, and especially our vantage point was like side stage at Dan Forrest. Ben and I standing there watching. And Ben's not a big memory lane guy either. Um, exactly. Yeah. But we, we he was having a great time. And. And just seeing the crowd watch the band hmm. and like I half expected to look out and see the same kind of young kind of crowd. And it was like literally those same people, the same some of those same faces that I recognize and in Ottawa, too, that are I have gotten older. Like the people, well, we all have. Yeah, I know. It's so but weird. I don't want to see them watching Everyone a show. Does. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the way it is. I I'm mean, just kidding. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. and I, this is way too. This will be quite a tangent if we go down it. But I think Rob, you've expressed to me in recent years, like. The idea of white men making rock music with guitars even gives you a moment of pause, I think, on some level, right? Really? Is that something else? I think you texted me once about that, yeah. <laughs> I, so, like, and I feel that, too. Like To the listeners at home, I am white. <laughs> <laughs> You're not racist. I know it's impossible yeah. to tell. No, all I'm saying is, like, that 
when we when we go see a Thresh Herman show and participate in it, we are in a sense like it is our own personal bygone era. Yeah. But it is a weird musical bygone era, like uh, of yeah. a band just getting yeah. up and playing a no, sure. fr- almost no frills rock show. Yeah. Yes, and that's not popular yeah. now. Like Very that's yeah. not really the cool yeah. thing to do. Yeah, and we sort of we had some conversations just about our show, the social show, and we had these kind of you know sort of tying into what's going on now. We we had these kind of conversations with bankruptcy a bit too, where. Yeah. The, the balance of like, well, there's certain aspects of old fashioned rock and roll that we embrace wholeheartedly and other things that we, oh, let's just learn some lessons and not do it that way. But, um, yeah, like the, the, the Thresher Mitch show would not, uh, if we were a new band, it would be not accepted now because we're so like sloppy and crappy and you know, everything, now is, everything crappy, now is pretty yeah. slick. Right. Um, right. You know, there's not a lot of, ooh, 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 you know, like, <laughs> in our, in our, in our show. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. What, the there's question no, being why is it, are we relevant? No, or? I wasn't going to say that either. I wasn't trying to intimate anything really, yeah. except that that's another feeling. That's just another feeling. I'm like, I'm at a rock show yeah. with loud, really loud yeah. guitars. Yeah. And mm-hmm. McGettigan said it, at the, when we talked, he's like, I'm just blown. I don't. He was Magetz was like, I don't pay attention to new music, but it was startling to me how loud we were on stage, <laughs> and that that's not a common experience anymore. You were yeah, saying yourself. I was saying the same, yeah, yeah, same yeah. thing. So that's it's all. I'm just, it's it's. I am hap- I'm playing more guitar than I've ever played. My son yeah. and I take guitar lessons together now, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so I'm just. It's really fun. Like I like mm-hmm. the instrument, and mm-hmm. that's all I'm saying. Maybe you're onto something by coming back. Well. We even for the take or leave. Tour. I mean, you know, however you feel about Thresherman and the songs mm-hmm. and stuff like that, it was very much a product of people in a room playing together a lot. Yeah. Like we we went through we rehearsed and worked on music like every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was one thing that we were fortunate. We got in sort of like the last vestiges of when alt rock bands were getting signed and getting money, and so we were being professional Thresherman guys for like a, quite a long time. Yeah. We would clock in at our space at whatever in the morning, late morning, and then jam all day and work on music. And a certain kind of alchemy happens, certain yeah. tightness and or whatever. Something happens. And, and you know, I, I'm not like a retro, I mean, you know, like everyone, I listen to all kinds of music. But I one thing I enjoyed about that tour is reminding me of how it feels to just play music in a room with people you're looking at them you're riffing on cues you're you're hearing each other yeah and small psychological things that happen um whatever kind of music you're into whether it's loud rock and roll or not like that sort of thing is something that you know i it certainly is around a lot now like yeah. it's not a, yeah, yeah. but it's not necessarily in the rock world the the rock world has gotten a little more uh sterile with you know and there's just new music that i like Whatever. I'm, my disclaimer being, I'm not trying to say like you know, music this day sucks. I'm trying to be like an old man. I, I mean, just, I'm biased. But, I'm going to a Thresh Herman show with a complete bias because I'm <laughs> on Team Thresh Herman. Like, I, right, right, I right. love the band, and that music yeah. is still speaking to me. Yeah. So that says something about there's just power my... in the rock and roll band model is not a dead one in my mind. That's right. That's exactly um, what I'm you, getting. There's at. lots to be done with it still. But well. there was a lot of when you texted me that I think there was a lot more language around like why I'm going to have to look at these texts, but I also am an extremely <laughs> inconsistent person. <laughs> and this I you can probably vouch for this like I'll get on my my high house as I said the other day. <laughs> I get on my high house about something and then the next day I'm like, no, I didn't say that. I was, you know, so sure. it depends which day. Like the freshman thing, I was like, depending which day you asked me, I was either yeah. we're so proud of this or the next day I'm like, what a piece of all the text want, you, I'm embarrassed by All it, the so. texts about the tour that you sent me were like, we're killing it. Like, we're, we're slaying. Like we're, you're going to have your face rocked off. I'm like, really? Okay. I texted you back. Oh, you brought your 90s cockiness with you on this tour as well. Rock and roll sign as well. All this rabbit hole. 1890s. Yeah. <laughs> We've gone through. Thank you for uh, indulging me in this discussion about mm-hmm. our past and your past. I want to talk about what's happening now because, as I said, maybe an hour and a half ago, whenever we started this talk, you guys are playing a show yeah. uh, together, which is nice. Like on a social level, I think that's great. Uh, Pete, the last time we had a long conversation about music, you had put out an EP called Lion. Yeah. And when we chatted, you said that was when? Last year? Yeah, last year. Right. And at the so time- still riding high on that. <laughs> <laughs> Great EP. I like Thanks. that EP a lot. But when- uh, I think your EP is longer than our LP. <laughs> <laughs> the bankruptcy LP. <laughs> How long is, the, is your album? Is it, it's I. It's, it's like thirty minutes. Or in something? our bio, which yeah. I had to write this week, it's four. It's 
uh, I think four minutes longer than the Ramones' first album, but oh, cool. six minutes shorter than Houses of the Holy. Is that right? By Led Zeppelin. Why did you, those are the benchmarks for? Those are the benchmarks by which every album should be judged. Awesome. I'm trying to think of what, anyway, I want to get back to the bankruptcy record so, in a bit because yeah. I've been just immersed Because mine it. was 22 minutes, which I, okay, I, I, I noted that because it's a show sure. with no commercials. It's a, <laughs> that's right. No and you, you also, but that's interesting that Rob brings that up because my, as I recall, wait, how many songs were on the Lion EP? Uh, six. Right, yeah. so you're halfway through a record, and but what you said at the time was like, "I'm going to flesh it out. I'm going to make this an album, yeah, at some point." But we just wanted to get the EP out yeah. there, and I it's, don't remember why you wanted to do that. Like, was there a show or something coming up, or uh, like a, there was a, some impetus to like, oh yeah, you, well, re- you probably had a residency. I or did. Something. I booked yeah. a residency. Yeah. Like, I kind of put put the residency on the calendar before the EP was finished, and I was going to, uh, yeah, I my intention that, was to. Is that how you an lead album. every interview? So you put in an album. <laughs> Why put out an album? <laughs> well, it's great obviously it's on how I lead. We're 55 minutes in. But no, I, uh, yeah, no, I didn't mean it that Why? way. Yeah. Why do you Everything do is just a little, like, there's a little bitterness in all my questions and I feel badly, like a little, like, sharpness. I didn't mean to do that. I know. I just mean... We had a chat about his EP. Rob, why are you getting in the middle of this? I'm trying to I know, I'm ask sorry. him why, what the status of the album is. That's yeah, all I, I meant. think I kind of, uh, I didn't fully let go of that idea. I just, I liked the EP as a standalone uh, little 22 minute show without commercials. And, right. uh, and then I thought I would maybe just start something else over. But I don't, I, I maybe I still would flesh it out. I don't know. And I kind of don't think it matters too much. Like if there's some time passing between yeah, yeah, yeah. then and now. Um, but I, the reason I've done it is because I frequently do residencies at the Dakota Tavern in Toronto and I would do them in the past. I would do them like for a month, like play once a week for a month. Now I'm playing once a month for the rest of my life until <laughs> I'm dead. Um, you are playing once a month. So there'll be the three more. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jeez Louise. You're playing, you're playing once a month. That's, yeah, that's the residency in at the Dakota. Yes. Okay. okay yeah, cool. I play like it had been uh, the first Wednesday of every month, and now it's I've gotten upgraded to the first Thursday. Good morning. Um, <laughs> I, hope, I hope people like to wake and bake. That's great. <laughs> so the first Thursday of every month until I dead until I'm dead <laughs> is uh, what, and this is the first Thursday with bankruptcy. <laughs> November seventh is what November seventh. Right. Okay. Yeah, and we're gonna do it with those guys. And and like what I do is I tend to just play as much as I want. Um, on those nights, but I like to share the night with somebody else, and this time I'm sharing with these guys, and okay. uh, and we'll do their record release party, and they can play as much or as little as they want. And there you go. So, uh, have you written new songs since the Lion EP was released? Yeah, only a few, but not enough to uh, complete. You won't play them yet. Uh, probably not. I'll probably probably wait. Yeah. Okay. Or Willie. Who knows? We don't know. It's he has to come and see. Yeah. Okay. So my you- show is like, will he play Party of One, the song? <laughs> Or will he just be party of one, the guy? <laughs> <laughs> you you have a band that is... Well, who's in the band right now? Elka's band is still the same. It's Jeff Hayshalt, uh, who plays in many bands. He's a keyboard player in the Trues and uh, lots of different bands around town. Gavin McGuire on the drums and Jeremy Little on bass. Oh, Jeremy's He's been our bass player for a while, but uh, I think the Lion EP was the first recording he's been on. Okay. He yeah. used to be Friesen. Doug, Doug Friesen, Friesen is our longtime bass player. He's still kind of like in the crew, mm. but... He got, he he just got busy with other stuff, and Jared had been subbing for him, and Jared just took over. Okay, yeah. okay. So, uh, okay, so we'll hear uh, the gamut of the Elkis discography when yeah. you play. Yeah, okay. normally it's a trip down, it's a trip through the three albums. Right. Yeah. Okay. You and might, like, yeah. order? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> There's like chronological <laughs> aspect to it for sure. Yeah. I all your records are fantastic. Like but I, then Hey Joe just pops in there. At some oh really? Point. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> just yeah. like okay. Guitar lesson segment <laughs> of the show maybe or something. That's interesting. <laughs> Rob, uh, I've said a few times now. Where is it? I have it here. This record's great. Show I have to hold it before I talk about it. <laughs> yeah. It seems to be upside down. Why is the artwork upside down? Is that a printing error that we've just discovered? It's not a printing error. Why is everything upside it's a, down? It's a pure mind fuck. It's like this. I was. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, okay. It's supposed yeah. to be sideways. I was looking at that. I told you that um, <laughs> when uh, before I came to interview you guys, or, or rather Thresh Hermit, and see your show, I think I'd mentioned that I almost got in a car accident trying to CD box set oh. to try to fish CDs out as I was driving because it's <laughs> oh, all compact. Oh, yeah, it's right. really complicated to get into, and it's the beginning of. I think distracted driving started with compact discs, by the way. Mm. Trying to get them in while you're driving. Anyway, my point is, I was looking at some old uh, uh, unreleased Thresh Hermit songs. Mm. One of them is called Bankruptcy. Yeah. Is that, why does that term, that's your song? 
It is, yes. Okay, so why does that term... It's funny, and there's actually... I have put out a few chunks of music under my given name and also a stage name, Tigra Benvy. Yes, right. Um, and there was actually a Tigra Benvy album called Bankruptcy. Yeah, so what's going on with bankruptcy? Is that a, um, I mean, obviously that's a fear everyone might have. Is yeah. It, is it a fear-induced thing? Yes, or fear and... I mean, it covers a few different... covers some territory, but I always enjoyed that as sort of a blank. I mean, you can apply it in a financial term, but also in sort of like an emotional bankruptcy. Moral spirit, bankruptcy. Moral yeah. bankruptcy. Yeah, yeah. Spiritual bankruptcy. The idea of, you know, literally broken the bank. Um, right, right. And uh, sort of a, a, a celebratory embrace of of despair or something, I guess, is the appeal there. So I wrote a Cheery song called- Cheery as always, <laughs> Rob. Cheery as always. Uh. Exactly. I wrote a song <laughs> called Bankruptcy that was in the Thrush Hermit canon, and we played it a bunch, but- um, it was a it was like, an unreleased like many, song, right? Like I don't remember it being. No, like many, like all my best songs for Thrush Hermit, they went discarded. <laughs> um, <laughs> that mathematics we were talking about before. I hope Joel's not work out in my this. favor. Yeah, yeah. Well, he these knows, things he knows my gripes. Yeah, he does. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I had that song, and I used it as an album title when this band came together with my good friend Jeff Luciani, who's in the room, and my other... Just here, lurking. He's just lurking, he's lurking in the background now. Texting. Delivered the records and he's texting. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> and uh, my other dear friend, Wayne McPherson, who I've known even longer than I've known Pete. Um, Very interesting vocalist start, that Wayne McPherson, I must say. He's, he's a guy people should know. He's a, yeah. He's been, if you like East Coasty music world, he's definitely been involved in a lot of stuff out there and with a lot of bands but um what bands because i don't know the he name he had a really great band called teen wolf oh, okay. um back in the day that was what i probably are my favorite they used to play with russian all the time they're a great hard rock band talk about self-sabotage though holy moly they were like the most self-sabotaging <laughs> band you could possibly imagine um he had a band called Chaz rules which was kind of oh, like a punk band i've heard of that that was really good um he is the only guy who's ever filled in on thrush hermit he, oh, what did he, he do? He played bass for two shows. What era? Way back. Okay. Way back. Um, Just like the title track, he sings lead on one song. Yeah. He's a great a great musician, great songwriter. The songwriting, yeah. the lyrics on that song are great. And then his yeah. delivery is like, I don't know, Jay Maskus meets somebody. I can't figure out sure. how to place that vocal. It's a weird one. He's a, he's a great singer, songwriter. He and I also had a band called Free School which didn't do a whole lot, but some of the music, a couple of songs that uh, we do in bankruptcy began in this band called Free School. Oh, anyway, okay. so when bankruptcy okay. came together, the band, Wayne, we were, had some name ideas, and, and Wayne uh, suggested, you know, this this thematic idea, this thing that's gone through your songwriting through years, let's call the band that. Yeah. Okay. And I love it. Um, and uh, I also liked that Wayne named the band, not even though it's sort of derived from me because it is a, is, a, is a true band and that we are very even though I'm kind of the captain of the ship every all the, the, the but to be all fair, members of the crew are very essential to be fair you held out a hat and the two names in the hat were bankruptcy and mother of fudge that's true mother of fudge was maybe going to be the band name come um, on that would be that would be a travesty of <laughs> band naming mother of fudge good lord <laughs> I don't like that at all. Yeah, that was Pete's <laughs> suggestion. Oh, okay. And at one point he was kind of, you know, we were like, oh, Pete really insists. He's really got his heart set on it and don't want to break his heart. So I guess right. that's what we're called, even though no one really liked it. Well, poor Pete must yeah. have had his heart broke because I think bankruptcy is a really good name. Thanks. And uh, it says it encapsulates some of what we're, a lot of what we're about thematically. I want to, I mean, we've been talking a while and we don't have a, a, maybe a lot of time left, but is it possible for you to give a general overview of maybe what's going on from your perspective in terms of lyrical themes on this record yeah. uh, and maybe even sonic approaches like the every I like all of it I don't know how to talk about it beyond saying I like all of it and mm. I think it's really dynamic and interesting and I mean you've got even the titles are evocative Harrison Vortex uh, Baby Be My Flock City Girls Talk gets in my head all the time as well cool. yeah anyway what, what do you think's going on um Every album is a concept album, but I don't know if there was a... a you a, mean since the beginning of time, every album? All albums are a concept album right. in some regard. Right, Um I don't know if there was an... Uh, an uh, we didn't begin with a, a concept. I mean, I wrote the bulk of the songs on the record, but we yeah. developed them together. So, yeah, I had to write a, a bio last week, and I was trying to come up with some ha- cock maybe like, theme. <laughs> I don't know. What, I mean, I think there's... Uh, Lockheed Martin is just the name of there's the There's a song? lot about a weapons manufacturer? stuff going on yeah. in the world today, but I think I, I've lyrically, uh, I have sort of veered 
intentionally towards a bit more abstraction than I think I used to. Um, kind of maybe as a shield, but also I think I would rather evoke than uh, describe, I think, most of the time. Um, so this, there's a sort of, there are linkages in terms of confusion and anxiety and concern about oneself amid a very confusing world. Right. Um, I think you and I, I, w- I was on this very podcast oh, talking about the first bankruptcy yeah, album we yeah. talked about if there's any link between songwriting and the stuff I've written in my prose right because you're a novelist as well I'm yes. a novelist as well yeah and I think that's always it it's like how does the ind- the individual mind continue and endure in a world that is so confusing and bewildering and overwhelming um, which is you know a very jo- general thing but that's always kind of the starting point for me I never yeah. I never seek answers I seek questions uh, right, asking interesting questions. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I like I say, I love the songwriting. It, it is evocative. It makes me think of mm-hmm. things. Uh, this brings me to Pete. Uh, Pete, we mentioned that Rob has written some books. Why haven't you written any books? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I have. How, uh, you've written some books. Yeah. Okay. Well, what kind of books are they? Uh, I'm not, te- you're not telling. You're not telling me the <laughs> name. Okay. I just think you'd want to have them out there. That's have the, you written any books, Vish? I haven't. Not yet. No. I get asked sometimes why don't you write a book, and I'm like, what yeah. about what? I don't know what I would write a book about. Yeah, I don't know what you would write a book about either. Thanks, Pete. Yeah. I could write about this. This is weird experience where we're, you know, it's a little passive aggressive. Everything's kind of a little off <laughs> in our dynamic. No, uh, it, it, do you, do you, but you do other yeah. stuff, right? Beyond your producing records as I well? Do, I do. I Robin's Nest is where we're sitting yes, right now. Yes. Is uh, home to many rehearsals for bands I don't have anything to do with. <laughs> uh, I've been doing, I've been doing like commercial voice acting. That's yes. Been, uh, I want to talk to you about that. It's sometime. not something I'm creatively in charge of. So I'm just more like a guitar than a guitar player. When I go do that, but that's really fun. Uh, and you know, I, years ago, we also uh, had a comic strip we wrote together. Yes, we made together. Oh, uh, I don't remember uh, this. Wrote together, and he illustrated. Where, yeah. Would I have seen this somewhere, or could I have seen this somewhere? I should say. You wish. Yeah, I'm Vish actually. <laughs> uh, you you wrote a comic strip together. That sounds like an interesting thing. Yeah. Can you explain the? Uh, I'm, I guess I'm reluctant because it might not be funny in description. But it's not funny. It was. It was not meant to be funny. <laughs> it was not. It was not necessarily meant to be funny. Yeah. We. Sorry, uh, that was funny. That just made me laugh. <laughs> um, we wrote a very. It was. A, it was meant to be a very conventional. Yes. Three panel. Four panel. N- four panel newspaper funnies page. Okay, um, okay. In the spirit of like I don't know, like like Marmaduke or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, was Marmaduke was single panel, I guess. But uh, right, was he, that was, was another vibe. Panel? Like Marmaduke uh, was not was Marmaduke. Okay, a maybe that's a bad example. More in the vein of Garfield. I don't know, uh, yeah, or like uh, Blondie, like Wizard of Id, or something. Sure, like, Wizard of Id, or kind of BC, un, not, or something BC. like that. Oh yeah, I remember like that. that. I missed that. Yeah, uh, like the 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 <laughs> daily kind of comics, which we don't see much of anymore. Are that they were, in the paper? I don't pick up a paper. I don't think so. These days, might... if you're a cartoonist, it usually implies that you're basically kind of like a zine artist or like a like yeah. a, Instagram artist. Instagram artist. Yeah. Sort of, there's a sort of like counterculturalist, yeah. and yeah. which is good. I'm pro that. But we were like. Can we write a like a Gary Larson style? Gary, oh, that would have been single panel, yeah, but daily, but, yeah, medium, not even funny, maybe smirk. Sure, 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 sure. Like sure. Adam, or uh, for better or for worse, or like all these ones <laughs> oh, that you know yeah. that you just saw them. Like yeah. you, yeah. like you looked at them Garfield. And, really, I mean Garfield. Garfield yeah, seems yeah. to be. I said it first, but it seems yeah. to be where you were. Actually, going. our thing was very Garfield. Yeah, even the even the concept was, it was just a cat. And a uh, big guy. <laughs> sort of was. There's a duck and wolf, a dog and a dog and a duck. Oh, a dog and, and a duck. A dog yeah. and a duck and a guy. A dog and a duck and, and a guy. And it was called Wolf Quack and Edge. And uh, Wolf oh, was, it a was dog. Edge the guitar player was the guy. Ed, Is that what no, it was? not no. the Edge. Edge. <laughs> yeah, it was just Edge. And Edge was sort of a Van Damme style oh, action hero. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he was a Hollywood actor, action movie star. Uh huh. And he lived with a duck. And in the of first, yeah. in the and first, a uh, and a dog. But in the oh, first right. episode, uh, the dog comes to live with them. Mm-hmm. And the first panel, and this was going to be the sort of formula for every, every, uh, what do you, episode? What do you call a comic? Strip? Just, every, uh, strip. every strip. Every strip. Yeah. Every strip would be, uh, the, 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 there would be, uh, an intro, a sort of a joke, and then like a blank mm. square. A silence that speaks a silence volumes. Silence that speaks volumes, and then a punchline. <laughs> and so the first one is Edge says to Quack, Hey Quack, this is Woof. He's gonna live with us for a while, and it all took place in this sort of L.A. kind of uh, beach house, yeah. right? Or like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Woof says to Quack, uh, "I like to eat my own poop." And then the third panel is them just staring at each other, which we've decided would be 
that's how they would all go. And then the fourth one is Quack says, Rob, you don't remember? <laughs> he says, I think we're getting along. We'll, we're going to get along oh, just yeah. fine. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, that's not very bit... funny, right? No, it's not, not that funny. It didn't make me laugh. No, it's not meant to. But it was also a bit inspired because you're telling of the time, me your comic strip wasn't meant to make me that's laugh. That's what we've been trying to tell smirk. you for the last four okay. minutes. Smirk. If you saw it in print, you'd smirk. Um, trust us. I mean, describe describe a comic strip that will end. You know what? Any comic strip. Can I tell you guys a really quick aside? Yeah. There's no such thing as a quick aside during this interview. But let me tell you something. About uh, three months ago, four months ago, I had I was gearing up for my 500th episode of this podcast, mm-hmm. and I was trying to think of who I'd really want on the show, and I thought of Gary Larson. Oh, that would be great. Side. So I approached Gary Larson's people, and I didn't get a response initially, and they finally responded. Wow. That you know he doesn't do much many interviews, but we recommend you keep an eye on the Farside.com or whatever it was for updates. Like a week after I did this. And this is like, so for those who don't know, Gary Larson retired the far side, what, mm. 25 years ago or something? Yeah. Long, ago? Wow. long time ago. And then just disappeared. Like he did the thing that him and Bill Waters, bought Waterson, mm-hmm. right, from Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, they both from were, Calvin and Hobbes. The guy who wrote, the guy, <laughs> yeah. the, the, these two, I think Star the up. best comic strip guys <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. said, you know what, we're going to go out on a high note. We're not uh-huh. going to drag this out. Like, whoever and so they just and they vanished like they just disappeared like as what well, i mean what else were they going to do show up on hollywood squares I no i actually heard um that gary larson and, and uh calvin Winter- winterson bill waterson bill waterson <laughs> this is gonna <laughs> undercut Hobson? whatever rumor you've heard <laughs> <laughs> calvin Hobbs- hobbinson uh, is that his name yeah. calvin hobbinson yeah <laughs> anyway no, but i, I did i did hear that they're getting to back together for a tour of southern ontario yeah me too <laughs> two weeks no yeah. but what i was gonna they're say gonna play super loud doing oddly their old material but oddly enough like louder. a week later <laughs> gary larson was coming back like I just really? thought that was really weird that I uh-huh. randomly because who is I mean I'm sure lots of people think about Gary Larson all the time do you think he'll show up like wearing like a MAGA hat but so are you yeah, saying exactly. that you're going to be able to interview him no I'm not saying that I'm oh. just saying I picked someone who has been quiet for at least mm. 25 years maybe 30 I don't remember when that show when that comic I don't know you got me calling it a show yeah. I don't know when episodes of the far side stopped <laughs> appearing in newspapers uh-huh. But I just thought it was weird that I randomly. It sort of sounds to me like you're trying to take credit for. No, I no 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 no. I just think we were talking about comic strips. You mentioned Gary Larson. I just thought that was a weird connection to the show. Vish, I want you to take over the far side and be my (laughs) apprentice. (laughs) Anyway, all this to say, uh, I'm sorry I digressed here Mm -hmm, and try to tell you a story about. But Wolf Quack and Edge was not meant to be laugh out loud funny. Well, it's a mission accomplished yeah. based on what you've just said. But yeah, amusing, right. amusement could be had. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it would, I, like every comic strip you've ever read. I just. When did me, you have, when was the last time you laughed at a Heathcliff cartoon? I, you know? Probably 1987. Cartoon. He's kind of confused. <laughs> <laughs> comic. I think this is a lovely. Do you know that, like, the, 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 the basically the, the uh, premise of every Heathcliff <laughs> and every Marmaduke was the same, which was just like, but he's a cat. Yes. He can't do that. <laughs> Yeah. Which is kind of what we were yeah. going for with Wolf and Quack. It's yeah. like, but they're a dog and a right. yeah. duck. They can't do that. I take it back. Also all inspired because at the time, Pete and I were living together Yes, in, a, in an apartment Oh, is one of you Quack and one of you Wolf? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, was, well, I was the guy that liked to eat his own poo, <laughs> and Rob was the writer of the comic, by the way. Yeah, I just drew them. <laughs> all I was going to say- I still want to do it. It's endearing to me that you now have we this shared it outlet. You have this other already. thing you did. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. did. We Yeah, we lived together and had a very memorable year. Yeah. I had to try to start a band together. I was going to ask, like, has this? Why haven't you two? We had a band that? together for about two days called Falcon. Yeah. That our premise was we did fifty, like in you know how um, is it Vanilla Fudge? Do you keep you keep me hanging on? Uh, yeah. It's basically just that as the model. Like we'll do oh. like fifty peppy fifty songs, slow and heavy. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. That was our quiz. Now people are going to steal all our great ideas. But like that Mother was, of Fudge, Mother of Fudge. But this was <laughs> oh god, that's the band name right there. This uh, this was what twenty? Well, when did the, when was this a concept? Yeah, 2002. This is two thousand eighteen. No, uh, oh. 2002. <laughs> like 16, 17 years ago? Okay. So, I mean, I, I lost track of time. At some point, why this, wouldn't this you? This podcast has been going on so could long. You, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for it to be a, <laughs> a burden for you in any way. Do you think you would ever make music together or no? I don't know. No. Probably I don't mean not. to put you on the spot. Never. I would way rather write a comic. I would rather yeah. okay. continue with okay. Black and Edge. Yeah. Uh, Pete, where can people go to learn more about you? Because Rob wants to wrap this up. Uh, no, I'm Facebook. fine. I'm good. But we Facebook fan page, Peter Elkis. Okay. Or Facebook guy pay, person page Peter Elkis and uh, uh, Instagram Peter Elkis E L K A S right and uh, all the stuff is there and you're and we may see new music from you yeah. at some point yeah 
It's in progress. Yes, Vish. I'm just asking a leading <laughs> question in a weird tone right now. <laughs> Almost sarcastic. And Rob, where can people go to learn more about you and... Uh, oh, sorry. What's mm. this? You told me four months ago that you were working on a new book, weren't you? Yeah. What's the status of that? <laughs> it's coming out. Okay. I, I put the brakes on it for a little bit um, myself for purely, let's say, artistic reasons. Um, but it's it's moving ahead. Okay. So I I'm reluctant to give any updates on that, but it, it's happening. I just uh, yeah hit hit a hit a moment of of uh, pure self doubt, which and you it, seem prone to. Uh, I mean, I'm just gonna stab you right just towards the end. Just like yeah, you seem like you don't. You gotta, you gotta, I'm gotta, trying to have high standards. I, exactly. I think that's what it Wait, is. I never used to have any standards at all. No, no, no that's not have, true. I think I'm trying to have had... high high standards. Right. Okay. Um, because I mean, you know, um, for multiple <laughs> reasons. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, we, but it is coming out. It's it's done. It's just. Oh, it's, it's done. Great. Yeah, it's awesome. Done. It's done, uh, okay. and it's good. It's great. It's okay. the best thing I've ever Wait, done. Can I read it? Uh, before when it comes it's published, out? I want it. I want it before. Before it comes out, I'll I'll talk to getting you an advanced copy. Okay, yeah, talk I can to, take it to, to the people. photocopy place and just make a you know copies of it. Or tra- I don't know. How sure, this works. put them on the <laughs> the internet. Um, yeah, but no book books coming out. Good. Stuff's coming out. Okay, good. A movie coming out. Stuff's coming out. Movies coming out. Stuff's I, coming out. What's the movie? I shouldn't even brought that up, but uh, okay, you no, can't talk yeah, about it. Yeah, the okay. same thing. It's in I progress. feel like I saw you make movie. What do you do with movies? Uh, I work with a guy named Max McCabe, Lucas, uh-huh. um, and and he's a filmmaker, and he and I. Write is he not stuff. a former musician as well? He sure is. Yeah, he what, sure is. What band was he in? He doesn't like it when I bring it up, but he used to be in a band called The Deadly Snake. He doesn't like it. No. Oh. You know what? This is funny. I was I actually almost brought this up earlier because Max, Max and I, are, you know, we work together and talk about these sort of things, and he's the opposite of us, or not the opposite, or a different, different from us. In that, are you saying another person is different than you? <laughs> That's amazing. It has a whole know. other take on things where he a had episode. a band like our bands that were teenage friends, grew up kind of the gang yeah, yeah. mentality. Those guys were literally a gang. They were literally a gang, yeah. um, but not like they were killing anybody. Well, they didn't they kill just, anybody, like, but they Toronto had like rich an kids. insular... Yeah. Sorry, Andre yeah. Eche <laughs> yeah, Andre. was just on and, the show, and yeah. we were talked a lot about that. Yeah, they were like, the gang, mo- and they grew up and played music, made, yeah. went through the thing, got signed, made a bunch of albums, and then Max, you know, when that band broke up, he said... That's it. I'm done. Yes. I mean, also because he could barely play anything, but I mean, he was like, <laughs> I'll never play music. I'll, I'll never touch a musical instrument ever again. Right. Um, and, and stuck to it. Has certainly stuck to it. Yeah. He, yeah. you know, he d- has never played music ever again. Okay. So, and I was kind of like, ah, oh, that's sort of refreshing to <laughs> then all my, you know, people like me who sort of keep saying I'm going to stop and then I keep doing more. I more. think, you know, your core sometimes. And if you, if you know that that's what you, that gives you fulfillment and yes. it's something you know how to do really well, why would you stop? I, Trying to learn to not uh, care what other people think. You have to stop overthinking things a little yeah, bit and just do them. Underthink, just, like me. Yeah, underthink. <laughs> That's the key. That's why he hasn't written any books. He <laughs> underthinks. So, it does require thinking to write a book. You know how long it took yeah. to write Mother of Fudge? <laughs> <laughs> Like that. <laughs> just those three, those three, those words. three words together. <laughs> then to find the hat, it just sounds like an ordeal. <laughs> so, uh, okay, book. What's you can't talk, but you have. What did you do in the movie that you can't talk about? Can't I'm you? just a, a writer. Yeah. What do you mean, just a writer? That's the most important thing. Everything else is. I shouldn't even brought that. Okay. I'm, I'm I diluting I my brand here. Did you not Instagram it or tweet? I saw. Yeah. That. I forgot to. There's some stuff up. that's come out, and there's and there's a, a feature that's in production. Okay. Right now, so yeah. Well, it's I, happening. We'll hear about I've it. Help make short stuff but good for you awesome. yeah it's coming along I like I like that you're doing all these things that's great and where yeah. can people learn more about the bankruptcy yes, the, record yes the, the real thing is bankruptcy it's not the real thing you, this is a cultural show that's the most show. thing here right we now. talk about all sorts of things and yeah. you happen to be a guy that does a lot of stuff I would have been <laughs> happy to talk to I will if you want to talk about your movie or your novel whatever come back on the show if yes. I still have a show good I might <laughs> get cancelled but anyway, but wait, who would cancel you? It's your know. show. Yeah, my, exactly. My son. Especially just, now that I'm like Ed McMahon to your Johnny Carson. <laughs> you guys, Rob's, you should have been on the Eddie show Murphy. every episode. I, it's it so much be better. Not that it needs help. But <laughs> it would be complicated. But yes, that would be fun. Thank you. But anyway, sorry. He'd laugh at all your jokes. Um, I, no, yes, he hasn't, sir. La- he hasn't <laughs> laughed at all of them. I will say that. And some of them, he didn't they didn't deserve a laugh, I will say as well. Yeah. But tell us more about bankruptcy. Where where can we learn more about bankruptcy? Uh, I mean the band. The band. Yeah, that's the funny thing is you call your band bankruptcy, you get a lot of weird spam. I don't understand stuff. why people don't Google their band names before they choose well, their band names. You know, I mean, what's going to happen if we call ourselves? But here's bankruptcy? also the thing is that they're talking about the band name is that I I all I wanted was a band name that when you say it to people they knew what you were saying. After being in a band called Thrush Hermit for 
you know, yeah. was just mangled over phone conversations and in spelling. And I was like, it needs to be a word or a name or a phrase or whatever the band name is. The first time you hear it, you know what it is. One word too is classic. Bankruptcy. One word band names. Yeah. Classic. That's good. I, I believe in that myself. That's the nineties thing. It is actually. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Isn't it? Well, I mean, it kind happened, of, yeah. happened a lot more. Like stained. Well, but like, like stained. <laughs> sublime. That's it's sublime. so hilariously not true, though. I mean, like cream. Uh, Sloan. Cream. Uh, what are some other six? Led names? Zeppelin is one word, as far as I'm Led- concerned. <laughs> sure, there you go. I don't, Rolling Stones, I don't one see word. the space. Yeah. yeah, I don't see the space. Yeah. Rush. Okay. <clears throat> I, we're really. Triumph. I just, okay. That just, where can the, where, tell us the domain name where people Cactus. can learn. Cactus. <laughs> Metallica. Uh, wait, those are, are those not, uh, bankruptcy. 80s, 80s, I guess. The yeah. best, probably best, the only one I look at is the Instagram. Oh. But I was tied into the band name because bankruptcy, of course, was taken by somebody, some lawyer. Bankruptcy with two Ys, just to make things clear. Okay, on Instagram. Bankruptcy E. Um, on Instagram that's the only one I pay attention there's a Facebook uh, Mike in our band he's more social media conscious than I am what is Blue Rose Records that's the guess is that, <laughs> is that, is that, is that the record label <laughs> I've not heard of Blue Rose Records <laughs> well they're small well you didn't mention them they're from Victoria yeah, BC yeah, we just, hooked, oh, you we did just, we just hooked up with them for this record and uh, they've been really psyched and supportive what and I'm seeing here on the back of this uh, vinyl record is bankruptcymusic.com and oh yeah there's that too bluerose.com I presume people can order the vinyl yeah yeah, oh yeah, pre-orders are happening as of Monday. B L E W rose.com. We don't kind of run out. You might it could happen. This show is very powerful. Um you might run yeah, out. Yeah, so Instagram, Facebook, you know, you know where to find me. Okay. I'm around. Instagram so around. just the kind of the one though, eh? It's now? so much Seems- easier. I think we're all deleting our Facebooks. No offense to your two Facebook accounts, we need, but I think we're all deleting Facebook <laughs> I'll one now. Of them. Yeah, you should delete yeah. one of them. I think it's a really corrupt uh, thing. But they also own Instagram, so we're all just—it's all the same thing. It's all terrible. Mm. Anyway, uh, okay, so people can go uh, to those sites and learn more about the record if they. But want. a show we're playing. If you're in the Toronto region, or even yes. you know what? Nice thing with the Thrushermit tour, people flew in. People flew across the country. People went to the Halifax show. And the Victoria Is show. Is this a dig at me because I didn't go to enough shows? Why I did, didn't you fly I, I wanted to. I told Shotgun Jimmy on this show, mm-hmm. I'll go with you to all the West, the Prairie he shows. He came to every show. Well, he had to open them. Oh, yeah. He was forced. And he did our lights, too. Yes, he told me. He was very excited about <laughs> yeah. that. He texted me that. No, I uh, wanted to- I want to, to see people flying in- To the bankruptcy From show. all over the world to the bankruptcy Peter Elkis show. Where is it? At the Dakota, the Dakota Tavern. Tavern. Oh, it's at your residency. In right? Toronto, yeah. Ontario. Yeah. Right. Downtown Canada. Downtown Canada. That yeah. is very precise. The very I'm gonna, center of I'm Canada. I'm going to put that in Google Where Maps. everything happens. <laughs> and fly in. Yes. If you come to the show and show us your boarding pass that you flew in yeah. from, let's say, far, I'll give you a free record. Whoa. Really? So For the show. Okay. Just one night only, though. It's like those when the Raptors score 100 points, everyone gets a free pizza the yeah. next day. So mm-hmm. you fly in for the bankruptcy show, and the next day you get a free copy of that, the record. Is that how it's going to work? No, even when at the show. At the, at the show, even. That's you even stick more direct. At the end, though. You have to you stay for the whole show. You can't just fly in, get the free record, you, you and then fly back home. get the end of the show. Okay. you got to at least watch our set. I'll give you a record. But, you know, it's... And mm-hmm. also, yeah. You have pay, to stay for the song party of one. You have to stay for the fir- the song. We'll probably play it first. Which is the first song I'll play. Yeah. Um, right. You're opening your own record release and Pete's going to headline. That's the that's deal? how I w- work oh, it. Okay. That's Age good. before beauty. That's ooh, yeah. that's that's true, actually, mm-hmm. uh, on some level. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. I'll I, play to the uh, But all the more reason to come early. And All-Star Jam at the end. Oh. Yeah. Is that the plan? It is now. Like Yarmer, he said, Yager, I'll start a jam. Wayne. Oh, I'll start a jam at the end. Okay. No, we're jamming on the song All Star by Smash Mouth at the end. <laughs> okay, as uh, as it happens, uh, there is a new bankruptcy record out. So I, uh, uh, this is has this been okay? Like I, I will tell you, I don't often come to a, a place and talk to people who are in two different bands. Cool about a, one thing, and we, I hope this felt relatively focused, and we oh. got to some good stuff. Do you think anyone's still listening? I doubt it. So my point is, uh, uh, normally at this point, I'll ask my guest to pick a song to go out on. Uh, Pete, with oh, all right. deference, I just because there is a new bankruptcy record out, is it okay if we go out on a bankruptcy oh, song? Yeah, I wouldn't okay. have it any other way. I could play. Two, I could play a. An <laughs> That's Elkis. our first song. <laughs> wouldn't have it any other way. I could have. We could do a mashup, and I just play an Elka song and a bankruptcy song mm-hmm. in sync at the same time. 
and people will get the experience of both. But I do think it would be better, since no one's laughing at this premise, that we just go out <laughs> on a bankruptcy song. I thought maybe I could summon up like a mashup in my head. Of <laughs> it is almost Halloween, so some kind of monster mashup would have been nice. But why don't you, can you pick a bankruptcy song for us to, to go yes. out on? Yes. Anything why don't you we, want. Um, I was going to say, uh, why don't we play the first song on the album. I like that both of you have your, got song. your vinyl copies out to look at this. <laughs> I like, should know. Pete's going to make a decision here. I well, I, I like City Girls Talk. I oh, do too. I, but I, okay, Pete, I know that Pete, one. Pete chooses then. I like that one too. Okay, play uh, that one then. But, but, do you want me to play that one? Sure. I can do that. Is that cool? They're Pete? all amazing. Yeah, let's see, there's the cockiness that's back. There okay, let's go out on that. Do you want to say anything about this song? What is where, What inspired City you know Girls what? Talk? Okay, I, well, what? it's pretty transparent from the <laughs> your favorite word to describe songwriting. <laughs> yeah. Transparent, so transparent. It's a little obvious, oh but my God. because we're all fathers and we've been talking about our children, yes. This song, I swore I would never write a song about fatherhood, mm -hmm. but this song is about fatherhood, right? Oh, because, but in maybe a, well, it's kind of obvious what it's about if you listen to the lyrics, but no one will. So, uh, what do you mean that they, they can do that right now? They'll listen. You're, you're, you have. Two children? Yes, a son and a daughter. How old's your daughter? Uh, she'll be five soon. Okay, I have a very young daughter, and younger than that. Yes, thank you. Um, I just and, wanted to clarify. Yeah, she's miniature, um, <laughs> and it's very strange for someone who uh, has spent so much. I'm sure many people can relate. Uh, you know, uh, if rap, racked with anxiety and concern and and confusion about what the opposite gender. Um, it's a bad phrase. Opposite gender. The, uh, the, the <laughs> <laughs> you're a, it's you're, about you identify as a man. It's about and you, all the the confusion and strangeness of of a life of of wondering what girls think. Yes, yeah, so you've written, and now I've helped create a girl. Right. And written, what will she think? Now right. I'm wondering what she'll think. Um, and and it's a strange, bewildering thing to think she she's going to grow up. She's going to you know have relationships. She's going to. Um, you know, have like bad sex with people. She's going to do Good all these Lord. things. Jesus, well, yeah, I, I know that's, grow that's up. It's going to happen. True. I know. I, it's just a hard to. But contemplate. it's also funny because we live in this city, and I used to always think that city girls were cut from a different. Big city yeah, girls were yeah. different than small town girls. Right. Excuse me. If this is, it might sound horribly, horribly sexist, but uh, what about uptown girls? Now is your chance take on, to, control, now is, to control what a girl. What's thinks? your take on? <laughs> yeah, I can, <laughs> finally, my revenge against <laughs> girls and women of all types. No, no, I didn't view it that way. At but all. no, it's a bit self mockery in that. I am mocking myself in even the interesting have, idea, and it is like it is propelled by that anxiety about you know women and girls that have led me so f astray in my life. Both of you have written many songs about women, I think, romanticized songs, like romanticized songs about relationships. I, it is just like Kanye West now. Like, Kanye yeah. West is having this thing where all of his songs are like, I have a, I have daughters now, mm -hmm. and I've been a terrible man mm -hmm. for my whole life. Like, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Right. Uh, and that's kind of what I... But my... my attitude I think is maybe a different than Kanye is that I don't, no, I, don't, I, don't I don't want to protect my daughter I want to free her right. to be whoever right. she wants to be right. um, and it's just more sort of confusing and funny but like my feelings about that stuff are practically irrelevant to her life totally. I want her to live life to its weirdest fullest experience you know? I appreciate this because it totally changes the way I view that song now Mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly. I didn't think of that. I probably shouldn't have explained it, but no, know. no, no, no. I, 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 why do you say that? Why did? Why shouldn't you have explained that? There's a certain mystery can serve you well. But well, I, I, I thought I, I did kind of pick up on that when I heard the song. Okay, I, yeah, it's I fairly obvious what it's about. So I'm an idiot. Is well, that what you're saying? Is that how we're ending this? I'm know. dumb. You okay, just like yeah. transparent songwriting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go out on it so that we get out of this. This yes. is uh, City Girls Talk by uh, Bankruptcy. Uh, Rob Benvy, Peter Elkis. Thank you so much for being on my show back on my show both of you back on my show and I wish you the best of luck uh, with everything going forward and we'll yeah. see. <laughs> wait Luch play a beat <laughs> <laughs> too bad will she talk like city girls talk Will she talk like city girls talk? To speak the name.
seems so unimpressed To cling until there's nothing left Will she talk like city girls talk?
Ah, very special thanks to Peter Elkus for having me and Rob Benvy over to his house so that I could make the 506th episode of Creative Control, which is part of the Entertainment One Podcast Network and is available on everything. iOS, Android platforms, Spotify, YouTube, Audio Boom. It's everywhere you want to be. If you can't find an episode that you're looking for or if you wish to learn more about me and sign up for my semi-regularly scheduled newsletter, please visit my website, vishkana.com. You can like Creative Control on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Vish Creative, or follow me at vishkana. Listen to a radio show version of Creative Control on Wednesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time, around the world at cfru.ca, or on an actual radio at 93.3 FM if you're in or near Guelph. Also visit patreon.com slash creative control to make a flexible monthly donation keep this podcast going i do have an exclusive content tier now six dollars or more gets you access to exclusive content oh man as i speak i i need to get some exclusive content up on that patreon page so why don't you and i both go to patreon.com slash creative control and, and make sure that uh, things are up to date thanks again to pizza trocadero the bookshelf and planet bean coffee in guelph and granddad's donuts in hamilton for their in-kind support for this show uh, thanks as always to my friend Jim Guthrie. Uh, he lets me use some music on the show, and you can learn more about Jim at jimguthrie.org. And finally, thank you very much for making it all the way to this point of this episode. Not everyone makes it this far. You've done something wondrous, really, by by just persevering, making it making it all the way through. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, you know subscribing to the show. Thanks for telling your friends about the show and talking about the show and maybe spreading the word about the show, that all helps. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.